what's yours in this box here. So thanks to my Patreon supporters and everyone that's donating to the channel. It's much appreciated. If anyone's got some spare cash you'd like to give me to help me to buy items from Albag and Mr. Test Gear to fix for the videos on, then please check out the links below in the show more down the bottom in the description for uh, donations via PayPal or via Patreon. I have donation amounts as little as one dollar a month. So, right. HDMI switcher. Now I've got this so I can hook up my camera here, the one I'm using right now, to a monitor. And I can use the same monitor for on a computer as well, so I'm going to switch between the two. So now I can monitor it more easily and more accurately because the little LCD screen this camera is you know, nice, but um, it doesn't give a true representation of the brightness, so I'm actually having trouble trying to get it bright enough. So, because um, I'm using a um, quite high F value in order to try and reduce the auto focusing issues. So, anyway. So, yeah, just a power button and a input selections button. Not a lot to say about that. Uh, four HDMI inputs with tabs, which is interesting. I wonder if there's like an earth system or something I'm supposed to do. I don't know. Um, HDMI input service control. So it looks like I can probably connect up to this thing with a um, Ethernet. Maybe I can remotely go into it. Here's a MAC address, obviously, because it'd be on Ethernet. So let's have a look at this. It's got your OS232 connection information as well. I guess you can just tell it to change channels remotely by sending it commands. Here we go, here's the command information. Cool. So you send it serial commands and it will change them, do whatever you want. Excellent. There's the web interface. Oh, excellent, that's probably the easy way of doing it actually, using the interface. Hook it up to the network. The network monitor switcher. And support resolutions. And it's general specs. Hopefully this isn't washed out too much, I'm so I've been trying to get the brightness right and I'm not happy with it yet, which is part of the reason I've got this. Because what I'm seeing on the little LCD screen, this isn't representative of what actually comes out in the end. Okay, so that's that thing. Let's play around later on. So it's in here. You may notice the jumper. It's winter here and it's getting a bit cold. Oh, express thing. Sellers trying to get more trade, which is understandable, I suppose. Question is, what is this? Oh, the attenuator. So I purchased this for my new CMU 200, and um, so if I'm doing a radio with a lot of RF output, I can connect up to this attenuator. So it's 20 dB. Which should be sufficient, 100 watts. I mean, I'll do the job. So it's just to to each end. So just chuck it in series and um, hold your uncle. Pretty simple thing. That weighs quite a bit. <laughs> I'm not sure. Well, I don't know. Maybe half a kilo. Something like that. It's pretty, pretty heavy. So uh, cool. I'll try that go. That one, yeah. right. So not a lot to say about that. Nothing in the specs in here. Um, Nothing, couldn't expect it to be anyway. So, that's, it is what it is. Um, that's just a thank you card thing. Oh, what's in here? I'm sure, red docks for. Interesting. Mm. Oh, 
HDMI cable tester. Now I thought this would be handy because all HDMI cables, they, well, they aren't the same. All right, so some are better than others. Some have got different features than others. You know, like them, they're not necessarily going to have all the cables, each connection in place. So um, there's, there's a manual for it, and there's a description of what the pin out actually is, which is pretty handy. Um, and you never quite know if you've got one bad cable or the quality is not there or something. It's got, it doesn't actually have all the features. And that's why you've got different HDMI standards. So, um, no idea this is it. No batteries in it, obviously. Both ends need them, anyway. So you can just use that to confirm that the wires are actually just passing through. That's all it really does. This, this is like a um, Ethernet cable tester. So it's an LED bank. To, so when you do the test button, it will light the LEDs up to say if the wires are in present or not. And again, the front it's actually got the um, guide there. Try and get close enough to see what the come on focus. You know, to get all the pinouts on there as well. So HDMI connection on the end, as you expect. So I saw that. I think it was yeah, I'm like an auction site, so I'm not. Gonna, I won't be a link to it or link because it's just a local thing. Um, but I saw that on there. They're selling old stock from. Um, from a company which has gone out of business. And I've, I've put, purchased lots of things actually, always from coming from that company. So uh, I've been getting a few little bargains like that, and this wasn't that expensive. I think it was, it was about twenty dollars in Zing or something like that. I think I paid for it. Let's see what's in here. Yeah, okay. Um, I bought a few connectors, well, a few uh, switches, so. Now, you see these are just rocker switches. They're single pole rocker switches. Got loads of them. Um, I, um, again, these were on a good deal. I, I think there's a hundred or something like there. That's what I said, I think. I think I said a hundred. And, um, there you go. The specs are, if I can see it, can we get the camera to focus on it as well? That'd be nice. Yeah, 10 amps to 250 volt. Or 4 amps at 125 volt DC. I think that's what it says. It's a bit hard to read it. Um, does it have a signal on the back? Yes, yeah, it's, it's all marked on the back as well, but fortunately it's really hard to see. I don't know if you can get it in camera. I was trying to angle it around, hopefully you can pick it up. I can't see it. Um, I can see 125, 250 volt and stuff like that, so 10 amp, 125 volt. There we go. And is it 8 amp? 8 amp, 250 volt. Yeah, so it's, it's a fairly chunky switch, it's, you know. That feels reasonable, feels like a reasonable quality switch. So I've got a bunch of them, so I've got a lifetime supply, I'm never going to have to get another one. Let's see what's in here. This is probably from Element 14. And it is. So much packaging for such a little bag, for such little parts. Um, these are xenodiodes, 270 volts xenodiodes. Now why did I get 270? I think I was going to put them in series to, to create 540 volts. Yes, that's what I was going to do. So, so I've got two zeners there. Yeah, so I've got two zeners in series to create 540 volts, and that is then a, a voltage limiting circuit to help create some regulation. That's the theory. Um, that's for the leakage tester, which I've got just over here. Hold on. Right, so there's a leakage tester. Let's just try and get some wires out of the way. 
Alright, so I've got a new version of the ball being made right now. And the idea is that on this thing here, if I use 230 volts going in, I can then double it and then convert that gets converted to the DC as well. And then I can use two of those diodes in series to limit it to 540 volts DC. Um, which gives me a slightly regulated supply. The problem with AC mains is that it jumps all over the place, it's not consistent, it's not dead smooth. The voltage is always changing. So, you know, depending on the load, on, you know, not just in your house, but your neighbours' houses and the people down the road and, you know, the whole city, the whole town, the voltage is always changing a little bit. So because of that, you can't have a accurate AC voltage supply from that just off the mains you have to do something to try and regulate that so because it has to be converted to DC anyway I'm going to use these to try and limit that so it acts as a little voltage regulator effectively um, I do have another option if this doesn't work but uh, we'll hope to have to go there last thing this is a big box I've got no idea what's in here but I think this is Turner's so yep it's off an online auction as well and find out what's in here. I don't remember what it was. It's another box. Ah, wow. Okay. Hmm, okay. I'll just, I'll come back in a second. So you know how I, I quite often show capacitors in mailbag videos? Yeah, I bought some more capacitors. Now, these are part of a bulk lot, obviously. And I've got no idea what brand they are, some probably cheap crappy thing, I'm not really sure, I should have to research it. But I've got 600 capacitors. These are, um, yeah, this bag's open, there you go, it's got an A symbol on, I've got no idea what brand that is. Yeah, it's moderate weight, it doesn't feel too light. Um, I'm going to have to research it, it's got the vents and stuff on there, so it's fine. But 105 degree rated, so they're not too bad. I saw the 105 thought, oh yeah, they're probably going to be okay. Um, but 100 volt caps, 470 UF, I thought, well, that's a value and a voltage I would likely use. So, And I got 600 of them for, I think it was about $20. <laughs> All right. So, hmm, it's, it's cheap. Yeah, I think I didn't want that many. I, mean, I would have been happy with you know, one bag, but I've got six bags. 